Good evening. For weeks now, we've been covering the nuclear disaster in Japan, and not only the damage and suffering there, but the slow and inevitable drift of radiation into the atmosphere and landing here. So far, it's been detected in 15 states across the U.S., all the way from the West Coast to the East. And all the while, we've been told these are minute trace amounts that pose no harm to any of us. But now the EPA says traces of radiation have been found in milk. Again, they say far below levels of public health concern, but that won't stop some public concern. It's where we begin tonight with NBC's Tom Costello in Washington. Tom, good evening. Hi, Brian. The U.S. has already halted imports of dairy products and produce from Japan, but radiation travels in the air. It falls on pastures and meadows, and it appears to have been consumed already by American cows. 4,700 miles from the nuclear disaster in Japan, the faintest hints of radiation have now turned up in America's milk supply. Trace amounts of radioactive iodine-131 found in samples taken from California on March 28th and Washington State on March 25th. But levels so low, the EPA says a sample taken from Spokane would have to be 5,000 times higher to reach levels at which the FDA would intervene. For parents out there, this is a speck of dust. You should not worry about it, and the worry itself will be far worse than the dust of radiation we're talking about. The radiation most likely blew in from Japan, fell over the countryside, and was consumed by cows. Still, despite the assurances, some skeptical parents are concerned. When they tell me not to worry about anything, uh, I probably wouldn't trust it completely. You can't really trust anything these days. Earlier this week, the EPA reported it had found very low levels of radiation in the air over Hawaii, Alaska, California, Washington State, Idaho, Nevada, even Alabama. But it urged Americans to keep it all in context, saying, quote, radiation is all around us in our daily lives, and these findings are a minuscule amount compared to what people experience every day. We're seeing potential levels that are perhaps 100,000 or even a million below any level of concern. Our system monitors the air continuously in the United States. Still, nuclear opponents say it's all a concern. Since we're at the end of the food chain, um, you know, it, it represents a risk if um, these amounts continue to rise. Iodine-131 has a very short half-life, only about eight days, which means it loses half its strength every eight days or so. And we're reminded again today that just flying in an airplane or standing out in the sun exposes us to radiation every day. Brian? Tom Costello starting us off in our D.C. studios. Tom, thanks.